it was torrential rains that fell with such force that the ground opened up. You ain't never seen rain like that. And Noah's description of the events is such that he says the floodgates of the heavens opened up. Now there's something that I've got to point out to you because it's vitally important you get this this morning. Will you stay with me? I, I, see, I, I know what happens is, what happens is we, we, have, we have moves and flows in the spirit and so they take us into spiritual and emotional and physical realms and so then we get a little complacent, we get a little weary, but you've got to stay with me because I've got a word in my mouth. Tell somebody, stay with it. This supernatural event is chronicled by even the month and the day when the floodgates broke loose and the rains began. Look at verse 11. It says, In the 600th year of Noah's life, on the 17th day of the second month, on that day, all the springs of the great deep burst forth and the floodgates of the heaven were opened. 17th day, second month. Don't think February 17th. That's not the Gregorian calendar that they're going by. That's the Hebrew calendar. Do you know what I found out in my study? That the 17th day of the second month happened within our time frame on our calendar. I'm going to take you somewhere. Just keep that in your mind because I've got to stick that right there and then just hold that place in your mind. I'll take you somewhere in a minute. On that day... The Bible says that the floodgates broke loose and the rains began. Now, this is virtual recognition that the release of the sudden burst of waters, rush of waters, released the beginning of life for Noah. Why do we say that? Because it says, in the 600th year of Noah's life, say life. The word life there is the Hebrew word that means life worth living. In other words, Noah came to 600 years and something happened and shifted and everything in his life changed. And his purpose took on a different form. And his function and his mission took on a different understanding. And the revelation of God in his life took on a completely different manifestation and exaltation of experience. Noah said, something happened when I turned 600. <laughs> that sounds crazy. <laughs> so, so, something happened when I turned 600. Don't look at me, I'm not 600 years old. Don't you even. <laughs> Noah said something shifted. Something happened in my life and everything changed. Everything was different. Everything took on a new dimension and a new understanding and a new revelation from that time on. He said these rains came out of the heavens and the floodgates of life opened up. The floodgates of experiential blessing. The floodgates of a new dimension. The floodgates of the manifestation of the will and the purposes of God opened up in my life and everything shifted from that moment on. 
So those rains then symbolized and they represented the spiritual preparation that God had of an irrevocable future that God had planned for Noah. God said, I've got something for you, Noah. I've got something for you that I've been holding. I've got something for you that's been in waiting. I've got something for you that I've been hanging on to. I've had something in store for you. And I've been waiting until just this moment in your life to release it out of the heavens. And when I do, everything in your life is going to change. You've been waiting for a change and you've been waiting for a shift and you've been waiting for a transition and you've been waiting for a new season and a new dimension of my power and my glory and the revelation of my purpose and my person and my will in your life. And you've been asking and wondering and waiting, but you've just been doing what I told you to do out of faith and out of obedience. But I came to tell you, Noah, today that something is about to shift in your life. How will I know when I open up the heavens? When I upset your life to such a degree that you don't know what's up from down and what's down from up. When I mess with you to such an extent that you don't know whether you're coming or you're going. You don't know if you've been somewhere or if you're on your way. So you don't know. But I came to tell you when that happens. Know that the best that I have for you is yet to come. You see, up until that day, before the floodgates were open, there were no clouds. There, there was no rain. And so the question was, where's the rain going to come from? Matter of fact, not only where's it come from, we don't even know what it is. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send rain. Rain? What's rain? Huh. See, there's something coming into your life and you've never seen it before. You don't... You, uh, sh you, don't, you don't even know what it looks like. You, you, you won't even know what to call it when it comes. The only thing you need to know is that when it happens, everything is going to change. Abraham's walking along in his life as an idolater who serves a plethora of gods and all of a sudden, God speaks out of the heavens and says, Hey, I'm the Lord God Jehovah. Walk before me. Leave your country. Leave your family. And go to a place I will show you. He said, I've never even heard that voice before. Which God is this speaking to me? I serve many gods. He said, I'm the Lord God Jehovah. And I'm the only one who can control your destiny. So you do what I say. Jacob's in a place of revelation, asleep on a rock, and the heavens open up. And in a vision, he sees the glory of God being made manifest and the Son of God going up and down on a ladder that they eventually called Jacob's Ladder. And he says this, he says, God was in this place and I didn't know it. 
but I'll call it Bethel, the house of God. There's times when God shows up in your life and you don't recognize him. But after it's over, you turn around and you say, oh my God, God was there. I was there. And from that time on, something changed. Moses is out feeding flocks in the wilderness in Midian. He's been there 40 years. He's 80 years old now. And all of a sudden he sees something he's never seen before in his life. A bush that burns and is not consumed. And out of curiosity he says let me go and see this thing. And he examines it and out of the bush the voice speaks. Take off your sandals, for you are in my presence on holy ground. And I send you to rescue my people and to give Pharaoh a declaration and a proclamation to let my people go. Who shall I say sent me? Tell them that I am, that I am, hath sent thee. All you need is a God said. All you need is a word. All you need is a direct order. All you need is the assurance that no matter what happens, once he shows up in your life and things go upside down and downside up, you know something good is about getting ready to happen to you. If I've got anybody in here who understands what I'm saying, you ought to give God some praise. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. But pastor, up until that day, up until the 17th day of the second month in the 600th year of Noah's life, there had never been any rain. There had never been any clouds. What was God going to do? Was he going to create water? No. I came to enlighten somebody that God didn't need to create any new water. So you can't just read your Bible, you have to read your Bible. Because if you read your Bible, you'll find that in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 6, the Bible gives us some interesting information about water. Genesis chapter 1, verse, verses 6, 7, and 8. Look at it with me, it's on the screen. And God said, oh, there it is. Yeah. Let there be an expanse between the waters to separate water from water. So God made the expanse and separated the water under the expanse from the water above it. And it was so. I could preach that. Don't have time. God called the expanse, read it. No, 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 shout it. God called the expanse, one more time. God called the expanse. So what God had originally created was stored up in the God, what are you going to do? Create water? You want to create water so that, so that rain can come? God said, I don't need to create anything. Everything I've already made is what is made. I don't have to create anything ever again. I've got everything I need to manifest in your life. I'm just waiting for the right day and the right time because ever since 1, 6, 7, and 8, I've had the water stored up in the sky waiting for the moment to release it into your life. Don't worry about where he's going to get it. Don't worry about where the prosperity is coming. Don't worry about the promotion is coming from. Don't worry about your, where your blessing is coming or how it's coming. Just know that if he said it. Yeah. I feel the Holy Ghost. I, 